Welcome to Digital Hospitality. I am your host, Sean Walchef. This is a Cali BBQ Media production. Every single week we talk about our ongoing thesis, and that is digital hospitality. Every business needs to be digital first, and every business needs to be in the hospitality business. One of the coolest things about doing this podcast for the last five years is we get to connect with like-minded people all over the globe, leaders in the industries that we get to feature on this show. And today's guest is Matt Plapp. He is one of my favorite people, um, not just on a marketing standpoint for restaurants, but marketing globally. So I'm holding up his book for those of you watching on YouTube. It's Matt Plapp, Restaurant Marketing That Works. And do not let the name restaurant confuse you because we have a lot of small business owners that listen to this podcast. And That's why we talk about what we talk about. It's not just applicable to restaurants. It's applicable to whatever small business or big business you're in because these principles matter. And um, I'm grateful to have Matt here on the show to to share his expertise. Matt, what's up? Man, I don't know how to go on with that great introduction. I appreciate it, man. I I love what you're you're doing. I love your product. I've had the the pleasure of enjoying (laughs) it when I was in San Diego uh, last time I was out there. And yeah, I appreciate the uh, all the praise there and, and showing the book. And you're right. I joke. I always tell people, cover the word restaurant up. It can be car wash marketing that work. It's the same principles. And ironically, I just read a book. I don't know if you've heard of Alex Ramosi or not, but he's got a couple of really good books out there. And one of them is called Gym Launch Secrets. And I read it because I'm trying to figure out how to, de- to deliver better products to our customers. And I, yeah. I joked, I'm like, man, cover the word gym up and just put marketing agency launch and you can <laughs> If you can picture the words changing in the book, it's a goldmine for any business. Well, I think that's the coolest thing about, you know, what I've learned putting on this podcast, connecting with listeners from all over the globe, you know, doing what we call digital hospitality, making online connections and making them come to life. I mean, you came out to our restaurant with David from your team and, you know, the work that you do, I already knew your digital heartbeat from the content that you were creating online from what you were doing on LinkedIn, what you were doing on TikTok, what you were doing on Instagram, I was already aware of you and your brand, which is what we teach listeners of this show, is this is why nobody else is going to promote your business the way that you are going to promote your business. Never have we had the tools available to do the things that we talk about, which is smartphone storytelling, getting out your phone and letting people give people access to you, your journey, your products, your services, your team. Tell me, because there's a lot of things I want to cover, because you have so much vast knowledge, and we have so many people that um, can benefit from from your wealth of knowledge. But let's, let's start, let's start from the basics of who you are and what you do. Tell me about the agency, tell me about where you guys are and what you're building. Yeah, so uh, our company is America's Best Restaurants. Uh, I've been in digital marketing, this is weird to say, but since 1999, I love That's it. when I bought a book on Adobe page mill. I don't know if it still exists, but I bought a book at a, a client. I was a radio salesperson. Me and my dad and brother got together and wanted to start a boat dealership. And it was kind of funny. We had this idea. And I don't know how we got the idea, but let's just do it online. There's nobody selling consignment boats and campers online. Let's focus it in Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky. I bought a book and to put it in perspective, I, I used to make fun of my wife back then for using this thing called email. I could never find her in our <laughs> dorm. We went to college together. And uh, I could never find her. And I'd be like, where? And she's always in this email lab. Like, just call people, just send a letter. What is wrong with you? And then like flash forward a year later, I'm building websites. So built the website. We launched a business at the same time. I worked in radio advertising and went through a whole career there. And, and fast forward to 2008, I started our company helping our first one of our, I think it was our third actual client was a burger restaurant, figure out how to use Facebook. And so since 08, we've had our company 2015, I realized we had a secret sauce that was working with restaurants. Uh, we had 45 car dealerships, chiropractors, you name it. We had all sorts of businesses. It was me yep. and one full-timer and a couple part-timers. But what I, I saw as an opportunity was I looked at it. I've been a big proponent of gathering data. When I launched our company in 2008, I sent an email, a text, and yes, a fax to my list from when I sold radio advertising from 9903. Hey, guess what? Matt's back in the game. I'm back in marketing. Here's what I'm doing. I'd love to come talk to you. I'd love to invite you to an event. I did seminars every other week. And I always have that data. That's what launched my company. A lot of people say, hey, how'd you launch a marketing agency so quick? How did you go from zero to multiple six figures in six months? I'm like, I was lucky. I had a data of a few hundred local businesses that knew, like, and trusted me from nine years earlier. 
And so about six years into it, we had seven, eight, nine restaurants in our neighborhood. And I saw how valued the data was from a marketing standpoint and how we could use it over and over because, you know, our car dealership client, you know, Jeff Weiler, they had, I think at the time, 46 uh, storefronts. Somebody buys a car every three, unless you're crazy like me, they buy a car every three or four years. And so they didn't see the value in the email and phone number back then as much as, you know, our restaurant, Hofburg House Newport. And I saw it that, you know what, if I can get that person who normally comes here six times a year to come here 12, 18, 24, or through some you know, irresistible promotions, get them to maybe buy an appetizer every once in a while versus just getting beer and, and food and getting a dessert, I saw the value of the data. And so when I looked at it, I realized that those were the clients I liked working with the most. I, I would go in Hofper House. We had Hofper House, Newport, Cleveland, uh, Pittsburgh, and Columbus. And I would go there and look around. People were smiling. People were having a good time. Like when they're at the car dealerships, <laughs> they ain't smiling. They're having a good time. No, <laughs> it's like the it's they, like they it's haven't like they dentist. haven't they haven't adopted hospitality yeah. in car dealership business. Yeah. Well, and it's, they're also a lot of times don't want to be unless you're at a yeah. exotic dealership looking at Ferraris or something. Yeah, you're smiling, but if you're at a Chevrolet dealership, your car's broke down. You need a part. There's all those components, and so. When I saw that, I'm like, you know, this is an opportunity for me to bridge my expertise on getting people's attention, getting people to can give me their data and somebody that can use it over and over. So 2015 to 17, I created, I shifted our company to become America's Best Restaurants. And it's a marketing brand for helping restaurants. And then in 2018, I wrote my first book. I was traveling the country. And when I wrote that book and traveled the country, I saw something that really stuck out. I, I've got a term I always use called outsmart or outspend. You know, you can't outspend Chick-fil-A. Cali Barbecue is not going to outspend Dickie's Barbecue. They're not going to outspend Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, Burger. I mean, the, the number one selling burger in the world is the average burger, McDonald's. Yep. Uh, but you can outsmart them because they're a cruise ship. They can't shift quickly. They can't say, hey, managers, get on TikTok. And they can't Correct. be relative in their communities. And so when I was traveling the country, I saw an opportunity. And I said, man, somebody needs to tell the story of independent operators. And so I had this idea to do video. And so I started traveling to five or 10 restaurants a month, realized I was just looking like a, a, a poor man's, you know, Guy Fieri, Fieri wearing an orange shirt. So we kind of <laughs> shelved it. We went to Zoom, went to Zoom before the pandemic was made it cool. And Zoom didn't do it justice for me to sit next to Sean and eat the barbecue sandwich and amazing wings and all that good stuff. So we kind of shelved it. Well, then 2020, I saw I had Tom on my team. I said, I thought I was going to get some cool data report. He's our data guy. He's our, our head of our tech department. I said, Tom, we had a team like 44 people. I said, Tom, mm -hmm. I want you to look at our top performing clients. I want you to find like clients, people that are in similar markets with a similar type of restrictions. And I want you to tell me the difference between the top 25 over here and the lowest 25. What's different? And I'm thinking I'm going to get some cool report back. Like, oh, women this age and this email and text came back. And he's like, it's their story. What do you mean? Because the people who are dominating right now in the same markets are the ones of our clients who aren't are on Facebook Live, Instagram, TikTok. They're on there with their employees. They're on there talking about things that are relative to the community and, the, and their environment. They're just not selling food every day. Yep. And so I decided to invest. We, we have two vans. The second one's coming back from the West Coast next week. Uh, and that part of the company now travels and they film yeah, you know, we were doing 100 a month. We've went down to about 25 a month because we're trying to get deeper and better quality and do more with vertical video. Uh, and so we go into independent restaurants and help them tell their story. So the company's divided into, I think there's 15 people on the America's Best Restaurants, what we call road trip team. And there's 26 to th you know 30 on the other team that help with the restaurant marketing. So it's pretty fun because I get to see both worlds. And to be quite honest, I use you as a reference all the time. Because I, I always tell that. people, I see there's Thank blue you. ocean, there's red ocean. I'm sure you've seen that analogy and read the book. Uh, and, I, and most people have never heard of it. Red ocean is where there's sharks in the water and everybody's playing. There's blood in the water. Yep. You know, pizza restaurants. Every pizza restaurant does a freaking coupon. They do the same crap all the time. Yep. Blue ocean is when you do stuff nobody else does and you stand out, but you got to commit to it. And I always use as an example. The only people, only person I consistently do see doing blue ocean is Sean at Cali Barbecue. And I use it as an example with clients because we have this podcast studio. I started telling my story on this phone. Yep. All of my videos four or five years ago were on that phone with a tripod with a road mic that went to the little outlet to give me better audio. 
Now I'm fortunate. I have five full-time camera people. We have a podcast studio. We have a second studio being built with a real cool, fancy video. T what do you call it? TV wall right now. Mm -hmm. I have those assets because we've built up, but honestly, the story was identical when it was a phone. Yep. And when it was a tripod, it's just a little fancier now. And there's just not a lot of restaurants doing it. And that's what to me saddens me is that not enough people are capitalizing on this free marketing opportunity in their hand. Yeah. The media machine that is in our hand, you know, the amount that we take it for granted, it's not just restaurant owners, it's business owners. It's big business too. You know, I was just at the mere tech conference and to think of how many incredible executives were there that have incredible software for restaurants, multi-unit restaurants and they too have a smartphone in their pocket. They too can go on Instagram live. They too can make a TikTok video. And um, so many people, everyone wants social media marketing and branding to be someone else's job. It's someone else in the department. And the people that are winning are the ones that they might even have a big team, but they also understand it's part of their job. Yeah. Part of their job is to give the customer, the friend, the person that's supporting the brand access that's what this smartphone does. It allows people to have access. One of the things I love about what you're building is you're teaching and enabling people, restaurant owners, to show them by doing. We can talk about it all day on podcasts, on YouTube, on TikTok, on LinkedIn. We can talk about it. But once you get the media magic, once somebody sees the content, they see the written article, they see oh my gosh, this should go on our website. Matt came and they did this incredible episode. I want to put this on our website. And then they go and they look like, well, my website sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> How do I fix my website? Um, one of the things I, I want to ask you about, because it's since we're, since we started with email marketing, I don't want to get off the topic because it has been a clubhouse topic. Shair, who joins our clubhouse rooms, he wanted to talk about specifically email marketing and text marketing. Yep. Why is it so important? Well, it's free, basically. I mean, Email's free. Uh, texting, I don't, I mean, we, I think we have some platforms we do so much volume and it's like 0 0.003 a text. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tie this all on a bow of a, a video I did today. And it's kind of comical. You said people want to have other people do it. And this will all come back to your question about email and text is I have a team. We have a division of our company called Deep Work Studios. The studio I'm in on the wall back, if you saw it, it says Deep Work and there's a Love studios it. over here. We have four employees there now, and they are the marketing arm of our company. And I did it because I wanted to get a bigger staff and them to be focused on marketing Matt Platt. I had two hours on my calendar today, Deep Work Studios. We reviewed three pieces of content. We sat down. We recorded vertically on their fancy camera, like 25 one-minute TikToks of me teaching. It was quick. I went to Twitter. My tweets mm -hmm. I've been doing the last couple of weeks, every Friday we sit there, I talk to them. It literally took me 30 minutes to yep. give him these things. And then he'll upload them into a software we've got with a team we developed and it will have a bunch of fancy videos. But the reason I bring that up is one of those videos in there, I asked a question. I said, what if you could own a commercial, you could own a radio station, own a TV station. What if you could have a commercial every hour on the hour on the biggest TV and radio station in your community? Most people go oh, yeah, all day long. If it was free, you could do it all day long. I'm like, well, guess what? The biggest TV station is probably YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook video yep. somewhere. The biggest radio station probably nowadays is Spotify. And when I'm on Spotify, I'm typically consuming something on my phone and listening to music. Yep. And so the opportunity is there. And email and text are the same thing. Is I always, I've got a book I wrote that I never published called Create Your Own Radio Station. It's a chapter in two of my three books because I'm trying to brand the term. And I came up with it at a seminar back in 2009 at Hofper House Newport, teaching business owners about digital marketing. And it seems weird that I was teaching this stuff in 09, that I'm still teaching in 2022. It's not rocket science, but you're right. A lot of these big companies aren't doing it either. And a lot of it's because well, they're, they're a cruise ship and they can't move. That's correct. Yeah. There's a lot of people getting paid a lot of money to continue doing the same things that they have been doing that have been successful in the past. And the the most interesting thing for me is how fast things change. Yeah. Things are changing so fast. Platforms are changing so fast and people get too committed to, well, I'm doing Facebook marketing or I'm doing email marketing. And when I hear you speak, when I read your book, you're telling people to do all of it. You're telling people to do the same thing that we tell people. It's all storytelling and it's all 
bigger than storytelling because it's about relationships. It's not about transactions. And I want to go back to data because data is so important. You talk about it all the time, but I know it comes from a place of hospitality, meaning that number, that, that person, that, that email address, that phone number, that's a human that has been into your restaurant. Yep. That is a relationship. That person has given you money. Yep. Why does that, why does that trend? It, it's no longer a transaction. That is a relationship. And why is relationship? How does that, how does that permeate in everything you do? This is perfect transition. Cause what I was, you know, your question about email two weeks ago, the big game, we have to call it right. Super bowl. <laughs> Super bowl. Um, Nobody's going to sue. I, yeah. want, I want to get sued. <laughs> I know. I, I want to be on the front page. I'll, me and you, this is the episode that we got sued. <laughs> and so we'll turn that screen, into a radio commercial. Oh, my screen went away. There you are. So I, I'm, I'm looking at it. So our team has a different analogy with, with regards to email and text. Email, text, and social, I think one of the biggest problems, restaurant specific, that's what I deal with, but all businesses probably fall in it, is they talk to their customers too much. They yell at their customers about how to buy from them yep. instead of having a conversation. I've been with my wife 26 years. We've been married 22 and a half years. If I went home every night and told her how great my plap was, it probably wouldn't have lasted very long. Well, email marketing is a great example with the Super Bowl. All of our clients, hundreds of, of restaurants, we didn't send emails. We didn't do posts. We didn't advise them to do posts. We actually threatened them. Don't do them. Yep. We did an email and text about getting food for the Super Bowl. We said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to build competitions, contests on your Facebook page, on your Instagram page. And we're going to do email and text to your database and say, hey, the big games next week. Click below. Tell us who's going to win Cincinnati or Los Angeles. Go to the page. People comment. So I had one restaurant calls me up Tuesday after the Super Bowl. And I don't deal with a ton of our customers. The team does. But I happen to know this guy, calls me up and goes, well, got to hand it to you. Go, what he is, hey, my biggest Super Bowl weekend ever for people buying food for the game. Okay, well, what, why you got to hand it to me? We never made a post, an email, or a text about buying food for the big game. We did what you guys said. We sent an email out saying, hey, go to Facebook, click the link below, tell us who's going to win the big game. We're giving away a $100 platter or a $100 gift card. And then when they didn't open the email 24 hours later, because we have it set up, what I call smart texting, that we texted the people who didn't open the email. So we're not wasting, you know, the 700 people who clicked his email because he got a 48% open rate and he had like a third, like a 32% click through rate, which was ludicrous. I mean, because most click through rates are below a percent. And he had like 700 plus people or something that clicked the email. So we didn't text the people who opened and clicked. We just texted the people who didn't. And so then you go to the Facebook post and there's like 900 comments. And so we were talking about it. I said, well, think about it. If you would have sent that traditional email going, hey, you know, guess what? We're doing Super Bowl pizza wings order from us. You would have got a 10% open rate. You would have got three homeless yep. people to click the link. And that would have been it. Our email went out and got, you know, 3,000 people to open it and got, you know, between the text and email, 800, 900 people to click and go to Facebook. It got seven, 800 comments, which then put it on other people's walls, which created a conversation. Had nothing to do with selling food. But guess no. what? People, people aren't stupid. Their brain stored Cali BBQ. And then right. when the wife said, What are we doing for the Super Bowl party? Cali BBQ, because they interacted. So I'm a, a huge proponent of what Grant Cardone says money follows attention. The more attention you get for your brand, the more food you're going to sell, the more sales you're going to make. The problem is we all fail to retain attention. We, we think email doesn't work anymore. We think Facebook doesn't work because a 100,000 person Facebook page had 19 likes on the post. Saw that three days ago. Mm -hmm. 100,000 100, person it. page. And it's a brand that didn't buy their likes. It's legit. Yep. Nobody liked it because they've lost engagement. They haven't retained people. So when I look at texting and email, the problem I have, Dickie's Barbecue, I have a thing in here called Dickie's Poor Texts. And it's a whole list. They text me every two days to buy barbecue. Come on. I, I, at 99% of consumers are going to opt out of that. Whereas if they would text me maybe every two weeks and it's Matt, who's going to win the big game, click here to go to Facebook and let us know. Yep. I'm going to go, Oh man, that does sound good for dinner tomorrow. And then what happens is people poorly use social media and people just quit consuming it on. And you know, on I saw it was kind of funny. I send David, my, my marketing director who you met. Yeah. He's 21. David's, has been, he's fantastic. Been doing yeah, video great work. For, been doing video for restaurants since he was 13. 
He's my Impressive. marketing director of our company now in charge of like, I think he's got 15 editors he's in charge of now and five video people at 21. And he's been working with me since he was 19. He actually started following me when he was 18. Instead of going to college, his parents let him come to Cincinnati for a training I did on restaurant marketing. And I remember looking out the crowd going, this guy looks like he's nine, but David's a beast. So beast him, for sure. him and I were talking about this the other day. And, but I, I always send him on TikTok or Instagram. I'll find things like we need to be doing that. And yep. I'll send it to him <laughs> this morning. I got ready to send him a TikTok that I loved. And then I looked at who did it. It was our company. That's and then rad. I was in the damn video after like 10 seconds. It was me drinking a milkshake with a guy from Kaminsky's mm -hmm. in Charleston, South Carolina. It was kind of comical because I'm like, oh. And so I sent it and said, dude, I'm going to send this one to you because he knows when I send them why I'm sending yep. them. I want our team doing more of these. Well, this morning, he's actually in town. He's from Philly. So he's staying in town. And when he stays in town, my wife loves him. So he stays in our guest bedroom. And he's the only person I'm allowed to bring home anymore because my <laughs> wife knows that I'll be a cheap ass and bring anybody home and our employees. She's like, no, Dave is my guy. He can stay. Everybody else gets a hotel because I like David more than anybody else. There you go. Guy. He's a teddy bear. And so he's driving in the car this morning with me on the way to the office. And he goes, you know, what's funny about that message you sent me. I go, what? That was a month ago. I like, go, oh, seriously. He's like, yeah, that video was posted a month ago. So yep. I, it's cool that that algorithm brought it up to you. It's yep. A month later. And so what happens with the content is when you're constantly talking at your customers and yelling at your customers versus having engaging conversations, the algorithms turn you off. You know, email and text, people choose to opt out, choose to not open because your stuff's bad. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, they see. Nobody looks, nobody cares. Next, please. And so I think that's what's a key element. What do you think is the biggest fail currently when, you, when you're going and doing an assessment of a restaurant? Uh, so... Can I put a plug for a web page that has some cool stats? Absolutely, please. America's Best Restaurants dot com slash stats. We'll put a link in the show notes. So, about five years ago, I created what I called an attention audit, and back then it was for me a tool for my team to say, "Hey, when a restaurant reaches out to us, because we get a lot of them each week, these are certain things we have to know if they're a good fit, and go and be armed with." So, if somebody comes to me like I had a restaurant last week, doesn't even have a website. Come on. How that's possible in 2022, beyond me, they have a Facebook page. And I said, well, here's what I want you to do. Before we go to the next step, I'm going to refer you to three people I highly trust. It's going to cost you $1,500 to $2,500 for a very Which is clean. so cheap. Yeah, so cheap. Very clean, professional website. I want you yeah. to do this. Because there's no reason to talk to me. That's like having a piece of crap car and putting $20,000 wheels on it. Mm -hmm. Get a website first, get a rock star because people are going to go to your website and want to find you and trust you and order from you and give you their information. Yes. And so we have this attention audit. The first one was, do they have, back then it was, do they have a website? We actually got rid of the, do they have a website question? Cause I thought it was kind of obsolete, but I guess it's not now, but it's, there's six questions you can see on the website there. But what I did was I started doing these analyzations back then and we only judged them one-on-one, -on -one. never looked at the cumulative data. Well, back in December, one of my team members is like, hey, because my team, we visit a thousand plus restaurants annually. I've been to a thousand myself in the last 18 to 24 months, personally in the restaurant, not like on Zooms. I'm talking yep. in the restaurant, eat food, talk to the operators, talk to the staff. And one of our employees is like, hey, why don't, have we ever looked at those stats globally? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, have you ever added them up? I'm like, I don't know, not really. It's just a line on a Google sheet. So I got one of our guys from our tech team. I said, hey, Build me a dashboard and tell me what these stats are. And so that America's best restaurants.com slash stats are updated. So if 10 people right now, my team were to go in there and log 10 restaurants, it would update those stats. Awesome. Watch a video of their stats. There's six things. The one that is blows me away is the stat of has a tool in the website to collect data. Now I'm not talking about your point of sale because a yep. lot of people, I go to a restaurant that already has toast. And I've been to 10 toast restaurants and it uses my credit card. I'm going to get my receipt emailed yep. to me. I didn't give the restaurant my information. Correct. I didn't engage with them and get them to do something cool. So I don't count that. But 93% of restaurants, like 93 out of 100, if I were to leave right now and go into a circle in my area, will not have a mechanism inside their four walls that captures my engagement to give them my name, phone number, email, birthday, and visit frequency, which is what I go by. Because I don't like being emailed called, hey, you. I don't like emailing people that are frequent customers, stuff that newbies need to know. And there's a lot of things there. The other part of it 
is 97% are not asking people. My wife, this ring on my finger, if I do not ask for her dorm room number, because we didn't have cell phones back then, I'm really old. If I didn't ask for her phone number to her dorm, I don't have this ring on my finger and two kids 26 years later. And so what was failure to me is that somebody took the time to drive to your restaurant, drive past what, 10, 15, 20 restaurants, yep. park the car, walk in the business, probably sit down and order or go through a line and order. You know, like I know, Cal, you're going to deliver an awesome meal, awesome food, awesome atmosphere, awesome service. You owe it to me to get my information so you can give me that enjoyment more often. My wife and I are going Sunday night to a place called Walt Titching Post in Northern Kentucky. It's probably by far my favorite restaurant. Amazing atmosphere, amazing customer service. The food is 10 out of 10. It's my, my jam. I go there three to four times a year. It'll cost us 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. If they actually marketed to me in a correct manner, I'd be there 20 times. It's actually my book. The guy doesn't like me, I think, because I put it in the book that he, he looks at it as it's an insult. I'm a, I praise his restaurant book, all the time. You put him on the podcast. There yeah. you go. <laughs> he looks at it as an insult, I believe. And here's a funny story. I'm at a restaurant. Uh, one. I'm at a coffee shop in downtown Cincinnati telling this story one time. And he calls me. Literally, I get a phone call. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Hey, it's Donnie from All Titching Post. I'm like, oh, hey, what's up, man? I never, I don't know the guy. I hear, you, you're, I hear you said you're not invited to our restaurant often enough. I want to let you know you're always welcome. I go, no, I, that's not the context. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm, well, I was like, what? How the hell did you hear this? It's like somebody overheard you recently at a coffee shop, and they knew me, and they knew you, so they gave me your phone number, and I'm calling you. I said, well, I don't mean it in the context I'm not invited. I know I'm welcome. You yeah. guys rock, bro. I'm just saying that you don't do enough to get me to come back because if you had my – they have my cell phone number. I gave them my phone number today to make the reservations for Sunday. Yep. They have it. They will call me on Sunday to confirm I'm coming. Nowhere else. Like if they would send me a text every once in a while with something funny, a picture of a steak, some ribs, their rye bread, their booth that you know, they're, they're, they have some really cool and cozy atmospheres. I would be there 20 times a year. I have the yep. income to eat there. I don't cook at home. I made pop tarts this morning. It's the first thing I've cooked in like three months. Like literally, my wife made lasagna and, and she, well, she, she made uh, this meal the other night, uh, but it was actually, she got it from Costco and heated it up. So we don't really make cook much. My wife's like, I'm done with it. Our kids are grown. We can eat out. We'll do that. But my context was that they've never harnessed the power that Matt Plapp comes there. If I come to their restaurant, let's just say it's a hundred bucks is easy math. And I come there four times a year, that's 400 bucks. If they take the number I just gave them on there, and instead of call me on Sunday, still call me, but maybe also text me afterwards and say, hey, Matt, like ovation, Zach Oates, I'm sure they have this amazing. ability. Hey, Matt, how was your visit? I'm sure it was amazing, but we want to make sure. And I reply yeah. back and I tell them something and they go, okay, great. Do you mind if we text you some occasional awesome messages down the road? I'm going to say, yes, I love the place. Correct. And then guess what? Every two to three weeks, they might text me, hey, go to Facebook and guess on the winner of the Super Bowl. Hey, go here and guess how many steaks we sold last month. Hey, Matt, by the way, we have, because they're all like Saturday night, they were, the reason I'm not going tomorrow night is their reservations are full. Mm -hmm. Hey, Matt, we're not full tomorrow night. We have two openings. Call us right now to get one of them. I'd go there 20 times a year, and it's an incremental visit. Their only cost of acquiring me is the food cost. Yep. And so that's what blows me away. So when you asked the question earlier, I think I long-winded you know, answer is that, 97% of restaurants right now, 97 out of 100 are doing nothing to gain my data when I walk in their four walls. And that's a crying shame. It is a crying shame. I'm happy that you keep talking about it because it's so important and it's so easy to do. Uh, we live in a generation where everybody understands that we've already given away our privacy to Google, to Apple, to all of these different platforms. And not only that, but we actually want to be marketed to by the brands that we care about. We actually want to have surprise and delight from places like our favorite restaurants, because those are the places that we want to go and visit. Why is it so? Well, number one, it's never been easier to be top of mind. If you guys are listening oh to what Matt gosh. is saying, top of mind, top of the scroll, understanding that if you're putting content out there, it's not that you're advertising, you're not creating a commercial because no one wants a commercial. 
Like no one wants my four year old. He hits skip on YouTube. They know what they know when they're getting marketed to. But when it's native storytelling and it's somebody talking about a toy that they're getting paid to do, guess what? Dad's going to go buy that toy because it's actually the show and it's not the commercial. For you, how do you help teams with their social media? What, what's the somebody listening to this podcast? What's, what's some, some quick tips that you can give them to improve their, their, uh, their storytelling online? Uh, uh, by the way, I wasn't being rude. I was texting. Somebody's texting me in an emergency. I had to tell them you're, 15, 20 minutes. You're good. Um, you're all you good. Know, my number one thing is ABR. Analyze, you know, mark, I always say this. Advertising is easy. Marketing's hard. It's easy to boost a Facebook post. It's easy to buy a radio ad. It's easy to create an email or a text or a Facebook post. But having intent behind that is, is what's hard. So, Marketing is hard. It's not really, but it's a lot harder than just clicking the button on boost. I was on, spoke at a messenger conference a few years back. And one of the people from Facebook said one of the worst things they did was create the boost button post because a lot of people went on there and thought they were going to click the boost button for 50 bucks and oh, the food people showed up. It's like, no, yep. you have to <laughs> have to boost something that makes sense. Correct. And so the biggest advice I give people is have a plan. Like, look at what's out there. Look at all of the reasons you can capture people's attention marketing-wise. You know, Mother's Day is coming up in May. We do a promotion every year with our clients where we say, in April, not May, and we send this to the female customers, and we target, we, we talk to female customers on Facebook posts and Instagram posts. That's a key element we'll get to is know who you're talking to. Don't talk to everybody. Talk to somebody. Talk to Shelly, who's a 45-year-old mother of two, who's married, who loves her mom and goes to lunch with every two weeks. So we do a message in, in April and say, Shelly, we want to celebrate moms for the next month because you deserve more than one day. Do me a favor, click the link below, go to Facebook, and leave a special memory about you and your mom on the post, and you're going to be entered to win a great $100 gift card for my Mother's Day, thank you for all you do for moms. And we do things like that. And so what's to me, what's relevant about that is there's there's intent behind it. There's thought, there's targeting. Uh, you know, you always say if you want to talk to everybody, the easiest way to talk to nobody is talk to everybody. Yep. We're talking to Shelly. I tell my team when they're building a when we teach our customers too, when you're building a Facebook post, who are you talking to? Like, don't talk to all your fans. You're talking to Matt Plap. A guy who's married with two kids, you're talking to Logan, a guy who's single with no kids, who's 24. Are you talking to Mark on my team who's married, his kids in college, now the house? I mean, it's a different conversation. It's different. So I think the biggest thing that we teach, that we try to teach, is having intent and having a plan. You know, the calendar's out. Mother's Day is already planned, fellas. Correct. You can easily see when it is. Mother's Day, Easter, there's all these holidays, there's but a billion fake food holidays as well. And then from that, figure out how you can put a voice to it. But then the biggest thing that I, I teach everybody is, man, and no, I, I will also say this, even my best customers, 15 to 20% listen, let's get on camera. I mean, get over yourself. Get over that you're, <laughs> you're yeah, scared. You think you're fat. You don't, you're not pretty. I, I've had everything you can imagine. I'm like, when I did my first ever videos, 10, 15 years ago, I hated it. I was out of breath. I was <laughs> thought I, I was like literally scared to do it. Now I can literally walk in, get on a camera. It's not a big deal because I can do it. That's why All Steph reps. Curry can that's why Steph reps. Curry can easily shoot shots because he shot a billion of them. Yep. So that's the big thing we tell our restaurant clients is people are fascinated with your story, especially if you're an independent. If you own a McDonald's and you own 50 of them, probably not going to be as relevant. I'm saying it wouldn't wouldn't hurt, honestly. Yep. But if you're a one location mom and pop restaurant, I talked to a lady today. They have a menu item. It's all over their website. It's on Facebook. There's no description of what it is. It's called a toddy. And I said, what is a toddy pie? She goes, toddy was my great grandmother or my grandmother, my mom's mom. And she made these awesome pies. So they're called toddy pies. And I said, you realize the disservice you're doing? The fact that there's not a video anywhere that says that? Yep. People love that stuff. Like, I want to see what Toddy looks like. Bumpas is down in Charleston, South Carolina. It's an awesome restaurant. They have these things called uh, tachos. They're tater tot and French fry nacho. I think what they call tachos? No, I can't think of them. I'm losing my mind now. Condor fries. Tachos is a different place. But the condor fries, big fries, pulled pork, uh, jalapenos, all sorts of great stuff. Well, the restaurant's called Bumpas because the two owners, uh, the brothers, Dan and Connor, their grandpa's name was Bumpa. 
That was his nickname. And they loved him and they wanted to create something together. When they did it, they named it after Bumpa. And there's a giant mural of Bumpa. And I told him, I said, guys, you ought to be, you ought to every week go live on Facebook and it's Bumpa's podcast. You're telling a different memory of you and Bumpa. I mean, don't talk about yes. food, talk about you. It's in, nobody does it. Yep. It is, it's, it's a huge disservice. And I'm so glad that you keep bringing it up because it's what we, why we podcast. It's why we talk about the things that we talk about. We wouldn't be where we are. We wouldn't be getting asked to go to Vegas or Chicago to talk about the things that we talk about if we didn't practice what we preached. Yep. And, um, you know, that goes not just for me, but everyone on my team from Steven, who's running our ghost kitchens to Samuel, who's creating content for our Cali barbecue Instagram page and TikTok accounts. Um, but we want other people to win. We want other business owners to win. We want all of our partners to win. I mean, we, this is, you know, I'm wearing a toast hat. I, the same things that we talk about here, we talk to the toast teams about the sales teams and the marketing teams, you know, even the sales teams think that marketing is not their job. Yeah. Marketing is their job. Everybody, like everybody's job is marketing and branding. And it's never been easier. Once you get rid of the ego, the problem is the ego gets in the way and you don't like how you look. You don't know how, like how you sound, but it's all about the reps. Matt just talked about it. It's the reps. The more that you do it, the more comfortable you get at it. And you don't have to think about it anymore. You just go, I'm here and there's ribs going on the smoker. Guess what? I'm going live. I'm going to just pick a different platform. I'm on, I'm testing Instagram. I'm testing TikTok. I'm testing whatever it might be. But then the next time I do it, I'm a little bit better. You know, incrementally, you get a little bit better. What, um, as far as your big, big dream, what's your big dream? Cause we, we talk about my, my kid's favorite movie right now is sing Two. and sing Two. There's uh, the Matthew McConaughey character. He's dream, big dreams. And I think, you know, as somebody that grinds as much as you are, that's as successful as you are, you're, you and I have the same mentality and it's how do we continue to build your builder? You're in a deep work studio. Never would you have imagined you would have what you have now back if you asked five years ago, even though you probably did somewhere, but where is it now? Like, if you think now, what, what is, what does your company look like? Is this an international um, agency? No, we're United States. Uh... It's why not? Funny. Why, why, why would it not be international? Because I, I truly well, believe, I truly believe the lessons that you're teaching people here in the United States, they, they apply globally. Oh, well, I don't, I don't disagree there. And I guess maybe my, when you ask that question, my thinking hasn't gone there yet. Well, I'm taking so, you there. Globally. You're taking me there. So every international morning, every morning I, and I try to do it most nights too, but every morning, every day I write my 17 goals down. I have 17 goals. That why are 17? Special to me that I've kid why well, my birthday is the 17th of May. Okay. Uh, and I got to a point one day where I got the 14 and I'm like 14. I'm not going to remember. I want to just every day. What are my, what is important to me? And sometimes they change. Cause I had one recently that I'm like, it, it's not as important as I thought it was. So I got rid of it. And I added, build a tree house on the new property where we're bought. We bought to build a house. <laughs> awesome. So one of my goals is as lame as building the tree house. Cause I think that's cool not, that's not lame. Out. There's nothing lame about that. And, but my 17 goals, uh, the first, the first couple tie together. So one of my biggest goals is self-serving. I want to make a million dollars a month. And the reason I want to make a million dollars a month isn't because I want to go buy more stupid crap because I have plenty of stupid crap right now. It's because I feel like a million dollars a month is a cool number, but also it would enable me to do what I want, when I want, who I want with and why. I want. Like one of our employees right now, his goal is to have a new car. He's dominated it this week. He's dominated the past six months, honestly. If I had a million dollars a month income, I would have went out and bought the car. You know, a friend of ours went through cancer treatment you know, years ago. If I had a million dollars a month, or I, I could walk out and hurt, be the fundraiser to raise $28,000. Forget the fund. Let's do the fundraiser for somebody that doesn't need it. Here's your money. Yep. You know, so to me, it would be able to impact. Now, the next thing is I look at how do I get to a million dollars? In order to get where you want to go, you got to help others get where they want to go. My key stat is I want to help a thousand restaurants, independent restaurants, make an extra $100,000 profit annually. And I came up with that number because as I said, I've traveled to a lot of restaurants and I was talking to uh, Tom and Connie. They have a restaurant called Basilio's up in Fairboot, Minnesota. And they've been a client for I think three years. And I was talking to them about three or four months ago. And I asked her, so what, what, what is your vision? What's your goal? What, what can we help you do more? She's like, well, Tom's still in the kitchen. It's midnight. I'm at home. And so the reason he's in the kitchen is they need more pro they need more sales with more profit to be able to hire better people 
that replace them in the business on those times, like a Thursday night at 12 o'clock. They also want to not be the highest. You want to want to have more profit to be able to take care of yourself and do better. So that's what I see. A lot of restaurant owners I know don't make enough money. And yep. there's a lot of reasons behind that. But if they get enough sales, they get enough profit, they can hire better people, remove themselves out of the business, and then live life better. I don't do anything in our business. I have, I'm not on our org chart. I literally, every day, I get four or five sales calls scheduled for me, and then I do podcasts and video, and I lead my team. I teach. I have a saying, lead, market, sell. Lead my team, market the business, and sell as much as possible. If I do that, I'll get that. And then the last part of that, the, the, the thousand restaurants, is I want to have 100,000 users in a platform we have called ABR University, which is only for clients. It's where we teach them what I think are the 12 tactics that help them get into blue water and out of the red water. And honestly, it's funny. Eight of those 12 tactics revolve around creative storytelling on different platforms in a different manner. And so I know if I get 100,000 users on that platform, that means on average, our our average client puts 40 people in it, their employees, their managers, their owners. That's 2,500 restaurants. If we have 2,500 restaurants on the books, that gets me a million dollars a month. And I should be able to impact a thousand of those 2,500 at a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's amazing. I absolutely love it. Why is, uh, why is personal time? You talked about waking up at 4 a.m. I'm, I too, am an early riser mamba mentality because of my grandfather. Um, I'd love for you to talk about your sunrise, your sunrise routine. Yeah. So I've went back and forth a lot of times. And recently I realized that one of my problems is I wasn't dedicating enough time to certain things. And within our company, lead market sell, I have to lead my team. I have to lead the five to six key people in my company better. That's a, that's a weakness of mine is that I assume they know what I'm thinking. <laughs> and I, I need to delegate and lead better. Uh, number two is market better. And number three, I've got nine people on our sales team that I need to help them get to the next level because I want them to understand why restaurants need our help. I took my sales assistant with me to a restaurant down the street the other day to let her hear the process. She's a a sales assistant, but I also want her to grow in the company, maybe be our number one salesman a couple of years. But I want her to understand, like this client told us, Matt, number one February we've ever had, it's been up in 25 years. Number one February we've ever had was this past month. We've been with you for a month. You're the only difference. I wanted her to hear that. So part of my mentality is there's a guy named Alex Ramosi I mentioned earlier who I followed. I know him because I used to be a partner in a gym that used his marketing services. And one of the things he, he got my mind was you've got to have that quiet time and you've got to have blocked out. And he was like, I get up at four and from four to noon, I have no meetings. It's my time to do the number one goal in my business. And so I looked at that and said, okay, you know, three, four years ago, I would, Matt Plapp was like, I, I'm my own boss, man. I don't have meetings till after 10, I'll wake up when I want to. And then it went to, you know what, let's get up at six and go to the gym, six thirty, seven thirty, get the office at eight. I realized in analyzing my time in that when I, if it's after 730, my phone's ringing, my texts are ringing. We have an office. We have 9,000 square foot. People are walking in everywhere every day. Friends of mine walk in just to say hi. And so if after eight or nine o'clock, I'm screwed for the most part. Yep. And so from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. And it's 4 a.m. to typically 730 because I get a shower. And I can get a, I can get a shower in 10 minutes into my office in eight. So if I go 4 a.m. to 730, The amount of work I get done is comical. I literally turn around some days at nine and I think it's four o'clock because I've accomplished so much. Yep. And then I've committed that eight o'clock to nine o'clock, I lead my sales team. And then from nine to noon, because that's what's going to get us to the most people. That's who's going to help us get our most attention. Uh, And nine to noon, I sit in their sales bullpen down at our lower level. People don't know I'm here. My accountant and my financial guy came in here the other day to find me. And I, I'm like, hey, nobody knows needs to know where I'm at. I'm down there with them. They can get on my calendar some other time. They came by to say, hey, I stopped by the office. You weren't there. I was there. Yep. You know, somewhere you don't need to see me. And right. then from noon to one, I eat, usually go for a jog or something. And then one, one to one thirty, up until five, five o'clock, I you know, do this type of stuff. And then five to 10 o'clock is a husband or my, I'm a dad and a husband. It's the Christy, Cole and Paige show. That's amazing. Where uh, people that are inspired and they want to reach out, um, how, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, easy. My cell phone. And I put it out there. You fine with that? Of course, I'm fine it's, with it. it. It's my cell phone. It's not fake. A lady called me the other day from another podcast, thought she was just going to, it was going to be some automated thing. It's, it's me. Uh, it's 859-743-2408. 
859-743-2408, matt at mattplapp.com. And the mattplapp.com, it's my name, it's my URL, it's been my email for a long time. I encourage, you mentioned something earlier I'll end with on this. I encouraged my employees. I'm like, guys, I'll be here in 10 years. You might not. During this time, if you aren't branding you as an expert in the marketing world of restaurants or sales or automation or email or text, you're ludicrous. I'll help you. Let's get you on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, right now it might be serving me, but the more you build you, in two or three years, you might be great because my email address, I've had that for so long through a couple other uh, gigs with contra- you know, contracting with companies. They're like, well, you got to have to have our email. Now I use Matt Platt email. Yep. So I, I, I'm a huge proponent of, of, of self-branding, of, of marketing, that you know, the more people know you, the better. Well, once this episode drops, I'd love to have you on a Friday or Clubhouse at 10 a.m., uh, Pacific Standard Time, so we can talk about email marketing, text marketing. We've got an incredible community. If you guys are listening, please join us on Clubhouse. That's Wednesdays and Fridays. We will have Matt on, um, and if you're not following him on TikTok, Instagram, we'll put links in the show notes um, so you can see all the great work that they're doing. And if you need help with marketing, we always say stay curious, get involved, and ask for help. Uh, not all the time can you do it yourself. Uh, the more that we've asked for help and the more that we've gotten relationships with other other brands, other companies, other people that are way better than we are at doing this, um, the more that we've been able to scale our company. So if you need help with uh, restaurant marketing, if you have any marketing questions, uh, please get his book. Uh, please follow his podcast. Please follow his digital journey. Um, Matt is a one of, one of a kind and uh, he's our kind of our kind of guy, the guy that's playing the game within the game, the guy that's dominating and uh, more importantly, leading, leading the next generation of marketers uh, so they can help build businesses. Matt, thank you for your time, my friend. Hey, I appreciate having me on. I appreciate our kind words and keep crushing what you're doing out Cali BBQ media. Cause you're, you're, you're paving the way brother. And I hope if, if between you and me, one or two restaurants every week, wake up and take the action, then we'll be in a great place. We're talking global, years. my friend. We're not yeah. just nation. We're, we're going, we're time. going global worldwide. If you got internet access, even if you're on the moon, we're coming for you. <laughs> if Musk is up there in the moon. <laughs> All right. Have a great one. Thanks brother.